In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what can we say that Abraham found? our ancestor according to the flesh. Indeed, if Abraham was justified on the basis of his works, he has reason to boast. But this is not so in the sight of God. For what does scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. A worker's wage is credited not as a gift, but as something due. But when one does not work, yet believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as So also David declares the blessedness of the person to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not record. The word of the Lord. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you will fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trial, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exult, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trial, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us who have put our hope in you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, so many people were crowding together that they were trampling one another underfoot. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples. Beware of the leaven that is the hypocrisy 
of the Pharisees. There is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed on the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but after that can do no more. I shall show you whom to fear. Be afraid of the one who, after killing, has the power to cast into Gehenna. Yes, I tell you, be afraid of that one. Are not five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet not one of them has escaped the notice of God. Even the hairs of your head have been counted. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we're continuing in the letter to the Romans now, uh, continuing this discourse that uh, Paul is giving us, St. Paul is giving us about this relationship between works and faith. And again, we, he is trying to, uh, he's, he's trying to us that we are not earning our salvation by our works. That's not the way that it works, but we are justified by faith. But by the same token, again, as I was speaking about yesterday, we can't just say, well, then we just make some proclamation, and that's it. That's all we No, we have to live our faith, and that's where the works come in. They don't earn us salvation. They demonstrate our faith and help to build up our faith. So that's the, the uh, proper uh, use of works, I would say. He... Um, recognizes also that the, the primary thing, the thing that happens as a result of our faith in the Lord and following him, is this forgiveness, is the forgiveness of our sins. That's the, what um, one way of looking at this word justification in this context, to say that what the Lord does for us is he makes everything right, justifies everything, makes it okay, and does not remember our sins. So we have to turn to him time and time again as we sin and seek his forgiveness. And that in itself is a demonstration of our faith along with the good works that we do. Okay. Um, Jesus is still, in the gospel today, is still dealing with this opposition from the Pharisees. And the reason that, um, that he has so much trouble with the Pharisees is not just the fact that they don't like him or they don't like what he's doing and they're trying to oppose him. What the real problem is, is their hypocrisy, is that they don't do what they say. And I am frequently reminded um, in prayer and uh, one of the topics or one of the things that came out in the retreat uh, that we were just on the priests of the diocese a few weeks ago was this uh, this idea that we must live the gospel we can't merely preach it because then our words are empty and I have to I, I must of course look at my own shortcomings in that and hope that <laughs> that as uh, I try to leave behind my sinfulness, though it still is, uh, haunts me as it does everyone, that it... from following the preaching, from following uh, what I am saying. So we're all working at this thing. We're all, we're all trying to do better with God's, uh, with uh, God's help, with his grace. So... Uh, again, we have to be beware of that hypocrisy that, that Jesus highlights with regard to the Pharisees. Now, um, this whole idea of everything being revealed, 
I think is Jesus speaking about really the end times or for ourselves when we reach that, that point of judgment when our, er, when our earthly life ends, that God knows everything about us. He still loves us. He doesn't, he doesn't allow our sinfulness to, in one way or another, uh, make him turn away from us, though our sin turns us away from him. But he knows everything about us, and yet he still loves us, and he wants to save us. He, he wants that. So if we're thinking that we can conceal anything from the Lord, there is no way that's going to work. We have to be completely open and honest with him if we want to be forgiven, if we want that to happen in our lives. And Jesus follows this up, I think, with a kind of a, a sort of a strange illustration, but one that I, I think we can relate to. He starts talking about five sparrows for a couple of coins, and it, it almost seems totally out of context with it. But what he's really trying to say is that we are worth a lot more than many sparrows. We're the Lord looks at us, and not that he doesn't do the sparrows, he does do all of his creation. He looks at humanity capacity to respond to, to his bidding, to respond to the Lord, to, to make a return to the Lord as a result of all of the goodness that he has done in creation and for us even personally. He, he says, think about it, Jesus is saying, think about this in terms of how much the Lord values you, how much you're worth. And of course, the only answer, well, I won't say the only answer. I, I'm sure there are many ways, again, of looking at it. But the answer that should come to us in terms of wondering our value before the Lord is Jesus' life. He gives up his life for all of us. That's how much we're worth, his complete sacrifice. That's why we take time to celebrate the Mass, to remember that sacrifice but not to remember it just in the gruesomeness of it or something like that. We remember it as this completely loving action of our Lord before us. And it should lead us to be grateful for the salvation that he's won for us, for the forgiveness of sins that we receive and for all the graces that he gives us. But also it should help us to, to know how much we are valued how much we are worth. And to never, in one way or another, consider ourselves worthless or consider the good that we do not worth it. All there are always that. With that, we should be built up. And we will be built up by connecting more intimately to that sacrifice as we... Um, come forward to uh, share in this banquet in the Eucharist we'll receive. So let's pray. We pray for peace in Ukraine and in the Holy Land and in all areas of the world, that the nations of the world will respond generously to the needs of those who are suffering because of war. We pray to the Lord. Uh, we um, pray for the happy repose of the soul of Phyllis Lyon. We also pray for uh, uh, recovery uh, for Donna Wise and for um, Rita Pisano's son. We pray to the Lord. We continue prayers for healing and comfort for Susan and David Harrelson, for Joey Zima, Barbara Ruggiero, uh, Christy, Melissa, Alice Scholl, Tony Day, Kathy, Baby Thad, Woody and Elaine Gales, Mr. and Mrs. Ingle, Kate Kopic, Sophia Mordini, Gail Powell, Kitty Spurrier, Carmela Obachowski, Kenny, the Bishop Peter Jugas, Marie, Trevor Redmond, Marita Mouton, William Lemain, Madison Placencia, Herman de Santiago, and Eva Tabora. We pray to the Lord. Um, any other intentions you have that you'd like to speak at?
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, you have sheltered your people through natural disasters and human wars. Help us stand with all holy men and women who have resisted fear and chosen trust in you. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.